How's it going everybody? The voice of Ed Ricker here, and this is a video about Express LRS. For years I've been using TBS Crossfire, and before that, FreeSky uh, as the radio link protocol for my FPV quadcopters. Honestly, Express LRS is the future for FPV quads, and in this video I'm going to explain why and also how to set it up. First off, what is Express LRS? Well, it's a radio frequency communications technology used to control unmanned aircraft and ground vehicles. And to quote David O'Connor, ELRS is arguably best in class both for drone radio control and as an example of expertly built, maintained, and supported open source software. And to me, he seems spot on, and I'm in the process of converting my fleet over to Express LRS 2.4 GHz, which still boasts higher refresh rate while maintaining very good range with low latency and good obstacle penetration. 2.4 GHz ELRS is suitable for over 18 miles unbroken line of sight, which is pretty amazing. DJI Digital or Walkstone Avatar video transmission will fail way before that. Also with ELRS, many companies can work together or off each other to create new advancements and build products under the ELRS umbrella. And this keeps prices low, and innovation high. And Beta FPV reached out to me to see if I would do this video. So naturally, I'm using Beta FPV ELRS transmitters and receivers. I'll go over some of their products and also go through my favorite methods of setting up ELRS. Now, as with other radio links, you need a transmitter to transmit your radio inputs and beam them to the receiver on the unmanned device to receive those inputs. A good amount of new radios have ELRS already built in but my older RadioMaster TX16SV1 does not. So first off, the micro module. At $40 US dollars, uh, the white version maxes out at 500 milliwatts and has a few different frequency flavors, while the black version for $50 reaches one watt of transmission power at 2.4 gigahertz only. I'm not flying many miles away from me, so 500 milliwatts works fine at 2.4 gigahertz. So you have the OLED display right there, and then a 5D button for limited menu selection. Uh, you can do more in the Lewis script and on the in the radio. And then an XT30 port, as well as a USB-C port. The XT30 port is only for 2S batteries. So say if you have the Radio Master battery for the Radio Master TX16S, you could use that XT30 to help power this. You'll need that XT30 connection to run this at 500 milliwatts or higher. Of course, this one does not go higher, but if you had the one watt, you would have to. You also have your connection points uh, for the radio right here and some dip switches and the SMA connector on the top. Uh, the box also has the monopole antenna. And then this is going to be your Moxon 2.4 gigahertz antenna, very small. And this is gonna have great directional range like out in front of you and stuff, but straight behind you is where it kind of lacks versus the, the uh, monopole, which is gonna be better for Omni, but doesn't really have any singular direction uh, where it's strongest. Whichever one you use though, always make sure you have one attached before you power this on or provide a power source to it because you don't want to burn it up, and you will if you don't have an antenna attached when you're providing power. It do give you a USB-A to USB-C, and this is how one way how we can use this to uh, update the firmware. You can also do this over Wi-Fi, and that's actually how I ended up doing it. I found it easiest to update this over Wi-Fi, but if you want to go this route, you definitely can. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. The ELRS receivers I have are the Beta FPV Nano, Light, and Super D receivers. The Nano has the same size and identical pinout as the Crossfire Nano, which I'm coming from. The antenna, being tuned to 2.4 GHz, is very small, and I've installed it on two quads already, my Armiton Marmot and my Synlog 35V2. This receiver is what I would consider to be like the standard for 5-inch quads for good range, but not the smallest offering. Telemetry output runs at 100 milliwatts, and all ELRS receivers do emit a Wi-Fi connection as a way of updating firmware. The light receiver is for much smaller micro quads, tiny whoops, any other small drone where weight and antenna placement is a real issue. In this case, the light receiver antenna is actually this little ceramic tower antenna here. It's less than a half a gram before adding wires. And there's a new light receiver with a flat antenna for even easier installing on the smallest quad. You can expect 600 meters of range with these light antenna. This might be a good fit for maybe a, a tiny Cinewoop 
or if you even think that's not enough range, 600 uh, you know, meters, you could think of something even smaller. For instance, my old Meteor 65, which I used to love, but the SPI receiver for FreeSky was just trash. So you put this in there, you wouldn't really feel a difference in flight characteristics, but all of a sudden you could fly this without uh, you know, risking uh, fail safes. Finally, the Super D receiver. Uh, it has two UFL connectors to hold two separate antenna. So this one has dual receiver chains and allows for some serious long range flying. Two antennas are better than one when it comes to long range, but you can also create an omnidirectional signal with no dead spots at the antenna nose. Since 2.4 gigahertz antenna are small, it's usually much easier to accomplish this. This would also be great for fixed wing aircraft. This is my seven inch HGLRC Sector 7. This is my more long range type deal. And these are crossfire antenna, hence being so long. So if I were to put this in there, this would be a very much smaller antenna, lower profile and better performance, which is pretty awesome. So I can't wait to pop this into this quad. Now my Radio Master TX16S is Edge TX, not Open TX. And I think most new radios are coming with Edge TX, especially from Radio Master. If you're using an older radio, you might have Open TX. And if you're using ELRS, you need at least 2.3.12 Open TX firmware revision to, uh, to make it work. Uh, if you're using Edge TX, you need at least 2.4 Edge TX firmware revision. There are some separate benefits that you get when using Edge TX over Open TX. So I would always recommend getting Edge TX uh, latest revision on your radio when you're setting up ELRS. Now this particular dip switch uh, setup is for operating mode, but if you want to update the firmware, you would pull down numbers three and four and you'd push up numbers one and two, like this. And this is how you'd update the firmware and then you just revert back for operation mode. Uh, not every module has that and it's kind of odd, kind of tedious, but you know, don't forget that it exists. Putting the module in the back of the radio. So there's usually like a cover here if you know, you have a radio that doesn't have an internal ELRS module. Uh, so mine doesn't have an internal ELRS module. That's the whole reason why I have this. Uh, there are some ELRS versions of radios and I just don't have one. So that's why we're using external module. Plugs right in and make sure you get these pins lined up with the pins on the back of the radio. We don't want to damage them. And you notice I also have the antenna already on because I don't want to power this on without the antenna plugged in. And I'm going to power this on and check and see if I have the Lua script for ELRS. So if I were to hold the system button on the upper left of my radio, and I can go into my tools and I can see a bunch of different stuff like my TBS agent light from when I was using Crossfire, stuff like that. On the upper right, I do see Express LRS. But I'll tell you what, when I first did this, I did not see the Express LRS Lewis script. I'm gonna tell you how to get this onto your radio so you can see this exact readout. A good place to start is to go to expresslrs.org and this has everything you need uh, it has like a quick start guide, but it is kind of nice to have someone run through it with you on a video like this. So if you can see on the left, it says quick start. It says installing the configurator, firmware options, the web UI, stuff like that. We're going to go down to using the Lua script and it says download the ELRS V3 Lua script. So what you can do is right click and then save as, and this is going to be the ELRS V3 Lua file. I've already done that actually, it's on my uh, desktop, but we're gonna get that onto our radio. And the best way to do that with the radio off again, the SD card, my SD card's here, search your radio to find out where that SD card might be. Uh, now it's gonna be a micro US, uh, micro um, SD card. And if we're flying FPV, we're using action cams, we probably have some way to get a micro SD card to our com uh, computer, I just use a SanDisk adapter like this to get it to full size and then my laptop has an SD card reader on the side. And we pop it in, we can see the SD card contents. You might see two different things pop up, but what you wanna see is the one where it says SD card with all of these folders, firmware, images, logs, models, radio, ETC. From here in the SD card contents, we go to scripts and then we go to tools and we drop 
the ELRS V3 dot Lua right in here. You see I've already done that. In fact, I did that on June 18th. So I've been using ELRS for a couple weeks now. This is where you're gonna save it. And if you have an older version, like says V2 or something, make sure we're using V3 because we're also gonna be updating the firmware of our ELRS module to um, three dot something. Uh, and it might ship with two dot something like mine did. We wanna make sure we have updated firmware. We can now eject this SD card. We're gonna put it back into our radio. Make sure I can remember if it's upside down or right side up. I think it's upside down. Yeah, that's right. They always add these in kind of weird. Boom, let's power on the radio. And so some of you Welcome won't, some of you won't have to do that step, which is nice because you have a more current radio. After ELRS was released, your radio might have the internal ELRS uh, module already built in. So you don't need to do that. That's awesome. I did. Now what I did is uh, if I go into select model, you can see that I have a Crossfire and an ELRS model. So what I did, because I already had Crossfire, I just duplicated it and made it ELRS. Either way, if you only have one model, you know, let's just say that's the case. Uh, we're in the model right now. I'm gonna go ahead and go to model settings. And I'm gonna go to ADC filter. We're gonna turn that off. So make sure that's off. We're also gonna make sure that uh, your external RF module is enabled. So we don't have your internal module unless you do have an internal Express LRS module. But because I'm using the external one, that means I'm using external RF module. You go to Express LRS in the tools. I'm sure I held that system button. And let's see, tap, because I have a touch screen. <laughs> and look, we have our beta FPV um, 2.4 gigahertz micro module right there. And you can see that I have a, a packet rate of 250 hertz. Now when choosing your packet rate, a couple things you gotta think about. It's range versus latency. The higher the packet rate, the lower the latency, but also the shorter the range. The lower the packet rate, the higher the latency, but the farther the range. I think 250 hertz is a great middle ground for not only really good range, but also really good latency. Just not necessarily the best or worst of either one. Unless you really know what you're doing, the telemetry ratio should be set to standard, which then automatically changes depending on what you choose for your packet rate. Switch mode wide. My TX power is dynamic, max power 250. If I was going to uh, externally power this with that XT30 connection, I could bump that up to 500 milliwatts, but right now max 250. And then dynamic power just means that uh, when there's no connection or when it's there's nothing, there's no reason for it to be churning out 250, it knocks it down to 10 milliwatts. So like, you know, right now when I'm not actually connected to any quad, if I look on the back, I can see that it is 250 hertz, but it's only 10 milliwatts of output power. And that's good. I'm not frying this antenna at 250 milliwatts. There's no reason to output that much power when I'm not doing anything. Once I do bind and connect to a quad, it will then adjust that power level uh, you know, as, as necessary. If I start flying farther away, it pumps it up because it knows it needs to. That's what dynamic power is. We also have a couple different things. We have uh, most notably Wi-Fi connectivity and enable Wi-Fi, uh, which is pretty great. So that's how we can uh, connect to, let's say our home Wi-Fi, our computer Wi-Fi, and update this wirelessly over a Wi-Fi connection. We are gonna update this. Um, we need to get the proper firmware. And even if we didn't wanna get the proper firmware, more than likely we would have to anyway because we don't know what firmware this guy's on. Probably a different one. A couple of these links I'm gonna be adding in the video description, but I'm gonna go back to expresslrs.org and it says installing the configurator. Here you can download the latest Express LRS configurator application to your platform. Uh, let's see, 1.6.0 release candidate one. You can go release candidate or you can just go the tried and true latest, you know, official version that right now making this video, it is 1.5.10. This is the one I did, Express LRS configurator setup dot, or um, 
you know, revision.exe, and that's for PC. If you're using Mac, you're going to do the DMG. After installing it and pulling it up, we can see in the configurator, this is the first thing that I see that's come up, is that there are uh, a place to check whether or not you want to see pre-releases or not. So you can check it yes, and you see release candidates, or you can uncheck it, and you see only the official releases. Now that's the firmware revision we're going to install into the uh, transmitter and the receiver. As we scroll down, we see our target, which you see a device category. In this case, for this video, it's beta FPV 2.4 gigahertz, but you'd use whatever module you bought device. This is very important too. You have to get the right device. You see, we're talking about the 2.4 gigahertz micro TX. Now we have two different flashing methods here. Um, before we get too far, I guess we can decide which one we want to use. I did mine over Wi-Fi, but you can also use it over UART. You plug up your USB-C cable to the back of the module like this, and then straight to your computer. And then make sure that you have the Silicon Labs COM driver installed in your computer. There is also a link to that in the video description here. You'll need to have it installed in order to make this work. Uh, if we're going to go back up to Wi-Fi, that's what I'm going to use. Uh, so if we go to, uh, let's see, uh, under device options, you see regulatory domains. And you have regulatory domain ISM or EUCE. EU stands for the European Union. So any country outside of the European Union would select ISM. EUCE limits it to 100 milliwatts, which I guess is a European Union thing. And then we also have uh, our network on the right. And this is a way that we can uh, basically tell it what our home network is by name and also our home Wi-Fi password, which I have asterisked out uh, because I don't want to share that publicly. On the left, we also have what they call a binding phrase setup. And a binding phrase is very important. You need to have a custom binding phrase and it could be literally anything I don't know how many you know how many uh, characters it needs and this is a way for when you update the firmware of the uh, transmitter and the receiver it'll add this binding phrase to both and then that's how they talk to each other when they're both powered on they recognize the same binding phrase that they are emitting from here we're going to hit build and it builds a firmware bin very quickly. Well, actually, it went so quick that I have to minimize this to show what happened. So uh, we hit build and it built the firmware. It says update Lua script. We did that already. And build notice a, a firmware binary file was opened in the file explorer. And that's what come up, came up so quickly. So firmware.bin uh, is the new firmware. And that is what we're going to be adding to our radio. But it's important to do this while we still have an internet connection to our laptop because it did access the internet to build the firmware. Now mine saved it in some crazy location. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it to my desktop again so that I know how to find this because yeah, there was some temporary folder craziness. Now if we go back, we can see under Wi-Fi device selection, we see 10.0.0.1. We need to access the Wi-Fi connection of our micro TX. And because we installed the Lua script, we can go back into our system button, hold it there, go into our tools, express LRS, up it comes, and we're going to go ahead and uh, enable Wi-Fi connectivity. So we're going to scroll down to Wi-Fi connectivity right there, select it, and enable Wi-Fi says Wi-Fi running, press return to exit. We have like a breathing sort of like green uh, RGB light here on the module. And that means that this is emitting Wi-Fi. That means we can go into our Wi-Fi connections and we can see Express LRX TX as one of our options. Check that out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and connect to that. And I'm going to connect and the password, if it asks for it, I don't even know if it will, it might. Express LRS, that's the password to this Wi-Fi connection. So we're connected and secured to the Express LRX TX Wi-Fi. And we see a new device pop up right here. We're gonna select that. And you can see as we kind of scroll down, we see the, the, uh, the device here. Now because 
I'm using a Wi-Fi laptop and I just connected to the Wi-Fi of Express LRS, that means that I don't have internet connection anymore. So it's important that we built that firmware before we did this. So I'm gonna open up a new Chrome tab here and I'm gonna type in 10.0.0.1. Look, I, it's up because I've done it before. Gonna go ahead and enter. And this is the page that comes up because we're connected to the micro TX. Now look, you can see firmware revision. Now, if your firmware revision is two point something, you may have to do a separate step before you can move on. A way to check is to go ahead and try and update now and see if you can do this. So under the update tab, you can choose file. You can point to that firmware revision that you downloaded, firmware.bin, hit open, and then hit update. And when you hit update, you'll know if you're gonna have an issue or not. One of the issues that could come up is you get a notification that says bad size given. And this is a weird thing that happens when you are um, trying to update from a two dot something revision to a three dot something revision. Download repartitioner.bin and install that first and then see if you can install your firmware right after. By the way, there are also ways to add your binding phrase here uh, while you're connected without updating firmware, which is pretty cool. Also, you can go ahead and go to your Wi-Fi tab and you can set up your Wi-Fi, your home Wi-Fi connection. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, update the firmware on the RX installed in the quad um, so we can get that binding phrase going and make sure that this is going to talk with this. So props off because we are gonna plug this thing up. Let's do the Wi-Fi version first, but I'm gonna go ahead and swap over to the computer. We're gonna go ahead and look at 3.2.1, same firmware that we installed into the TX, but this time we're gonna go ahead and look at beta FPV device target, 2.4 gigahertz, beta FPV, nano RX. That's what we have installed. So at this point, we really have to make sure that we're making our right selections here. So if it was Super D, it would be the RX there, light RX there, but nano RX is what we've installed in my Armiton Marmot. Click that. And look, we have an extra flashing method. Beta flight pass through. Now there's stuff we have to do to make sure this is gonna work with our flight controller. So I don't recommend beta flight pass through if you just wired this up. Let's say you've just gotten this installed with the ground and the five volt, and you have your RX and your TX properly wired up, but you haven't dove into beta flight yet. We're gonna go ahead and go to Wi-Fi. From here, we're gonna select the same regulatory domain we're gonna select basically the same other things. So if you wanna add your home Wi-Fi, stuff like that, same binding phrase as the TX, they must be identical. So add that in there, and then also check out your auto Wi-Fi on interval. Some people suggest to change this to a different value. 60 stands for 60 seconds. So when you power this on with a LiPo, you wait 60 seconds and the uh, receiver starts emitting Wi-Fi to the laptop. If you want that to be a little quicker, you can add a lower number to this value. And we're gonna use our Wi-Fi device selection default 10.0.0.1, same as the TX. We're connected to Wi-Fi on our home now so we can have access to the internet. So we're gonna uh, build and we're gonna build this firmware and again, it gave us a .bin, and this time it was a gzip file. If we double click on that, we can see a firmware.bin come up, and this is for the RX. Don't get this confused with the TX version that you uh, previously built. This is for RX. Now we go back, we're gonna go ahead and power on the quad, and we're gonna wait and see uh, once this starts emitting Wi-Fi, we're gonna have it close to our laptop because it's a very weak Wi-Fi signal. This will automatically, in just a few seconds, well, 60 seconds, create a Wi-Fi signal that we can select. So let's just wait for it. There we go, it just came up. See how, how close my laptop is to my quad and it's still really weak. So connect automatically. So now that we have the firmware built, we can go ahead and enter that. Now we're going to go, go ahead and go to Google Chrome, type in 10.0.0.1 into the browser, and up comes your beta FPV 2.4 gigahertz 
Nano RX. This time I am going to connect this to my home Wi-Fi. So this is gonna be a little bit different. Over in Wi-Fi, I'm gonna select new network home, or home network rather, and then I'm gonna select the Wi-Fi that I choose and a password. The password is to my home Wi-Fi. Point to this address on your browser. So ELRS underscore RX dot local. Now I'm gonna go back to my home Wi-Fi, connect to that. So this is back to standard, how things uh, used to be before we did this process. And see, under network devices, up pops the Nano RX automatically. We do have a firmware mismatch though, 3.3.0. This is like an oversight on my part. I installed a release candidate, which is a different firmware from the TX, which is 3.2.1. So this is good that I'm able to select this and uh, build a, a firmware that's appropriate for my TX. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now, since we're connected, we can build and flash instead of just build. So let's go ahead and build and flash. And we have an update complete. I'm gonna wait for the LED to resume blinking before disconnecting the power. And success. We didn't have to go to uh, a browser and type in 10.0.0.1. We didn't have to connect manually to the ELRX uh, Wi-Fi signal and all that stuff. This is now automatic over our Wi-Fi at home. Very, very simple and easy. However, I must admit I'm downstairs nearby my home wireless router. The majority of this video was shot upstairs in my workshop. That's where my laptop is, but if I was connecting to my home Wi-Fi with this weak signal, I actually had to come nearer to my home wireless router. That happens to be downstairs by my PC, and that's why this configurator screen looks a little bit different than before. Now, a way to check and make sure that everything's connected is you power, you power on the radio, you power on the quad, and this is after you have uh, selected your binding phrase for both, and you've updated the firmware to match. So the binding phrase is what's going to bind these two things together. And look, we now have signal bars for our um, ELRS connection. Now at this point, you may or may not have everything set up. If you're coming from Crossfire, your ports might be set up right, and your modes might be set up right, but maybe not. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to Betaflight with a micro USB. This is to the flight controller, and this is where we can confirm that our ports are correct. So uh, with our serial RX, I know with this flight controller that UART2 is my serial RX, and UART3 is my DJI configuration MSP. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that we have a fail safe that's gonna act the way we want it to. We're gonna to go to receiver and we're going to make sure that serial via UART is selected and also CRSF is, connect, is uh, selected. Turn on telemetry, turn off RSSI ADC and we're gonna keep our RSI, RSSI channel disabled. Make sure that our channel map makes sense for our radio, and since we're powered on, we can now check and see if we have activity on our receiver tab, and sure enough, we do. Our throttle's correct, our roll's correct, our pitch is correct, and our yaw is correct. We also have our switches. With Express LRS, you can do a lot of things, you can remap a lot of stuff, but channel five or aux one in Betaflight has to be ARM. And it should just be like a two, a two position switch. So channel five, aux one has to be ARM. Everything else you can set up to your heart's content. I'm gonna go to uh, modes. It's very important to have aux one as your ARM channel or mode and that the, uh, the on, the arm on, is at the high end, so that 2,000 is going to be your arm and 1,000 is your disarm. Everything else is uh, kind of more customizable, so I have aux 2 as a beeper, aux 3 as flip over after crash. From here, if we go to OSD, if we're using uh, HD, you know, or even uh, analog, we can use both link quality and RSSI DVM value to kind of monitor our signal strength of ELRS. Finally, there are some presets. And so what I do, I have my ELRS transmitter set to 250 hertz, which I think is a good midway point between uh, range and latency. 
and then there are some presets. So for 250 hertz with ELRS, you can add some presets that will make your quad uh, fly even better uh, with that signal. So I would select HD Freestyle. Uh, I would select Serial Separate RX. Uh, I would select uh, Whole Pack Values, and then I would keep the cinematic rates unchecked, and then I would go ahead and pick that and apply that to my quad. Also, a YouTube channel called RC Video Reviews uh, gave us some tips on how to set up the, the system the best that it can be. And one thing that he suggests, if you go into model settings and you page over to your telemetry, uh, you can set your low alarm to 50 and your critical alarm to 20. That's not the case for older firmwares, but for newer ELRS firmwares, those are the best uh, warning levels for RSSI. Also at the bottom of that same page, remember to discover new sensors. So these sensors might be your current, transmitter power, battery percentage. Um, so those are all really nice sensors to have and uh, they just add to your telemetry. And so make sure that you discover them. At this point, I'm gonna power cycle the quad after having saved my changes in Betaflight with the uh, Express LRS presets. And I'm gonna unplug the USB. I'm going to go ahead and power back on and let's just go ahead first of all test our arm so my arm is going to be this switch aux one very good and arm off that's great now I'm going to test out my fail safe and just make sure that this is going to uh, the motors are going to stop spinning if I lose radio signal strength so I'm going to arm quad is uh, armed on the bench and now I'm going to power off my radio. I'm going to confirm. That's the fail safe. And that's what we want. We want to make sure that these motors are going to stop spinning when uh, radio signal strength is lost. And in beta flight, I set that to one and a half seconds. You can set that to more or less depending. Beyond that, you are set. And now it's just test flying and making sure that your system uh, is programmed the way you like to fly with your modes. Now at this point, because we've already selected our ports on our quads, we've got everything working, we can access this ELRS configurator through the Betaflight pass-through. But if we didn't have our ports already set up, we wouldn't have been able to do that. There's a bit of a, you know, it's like, well, what do you do first in a video like this? So Betaflight pass-through, I'm going to do that real quick. So Beta FPV 2.4, Nano RX, Betaflight pass-through. We're connected with the micro USB to the computer. Select your appropriate COM port and then select build and flash. That COM port isn't going to say Silicon Labs COM port because it's different. This is using Betaflight's STM Electronics COM port success. Very easy, very quick. Betaflight pass-through. So I think Wi-Fi is easier when you're first installing the receiver and you're setting it up, but I think Betaflight pass-through, a very easy situation solution uh, after you have everything all set up perfectly. Uh, but you can do either one. Like I said, power it on, use Wi-Fi, keep it powered off, and just use Betaflight pass-through. Up to you. So when I was using this, this has an O3 air unit, um, I was not getting Betaflight activity because I had the DJI O3 air units signal and signal ground wired to the flight controller harness, uh, which I didn't need because I'm, I, obviously I'm, I'm using the Express LRS, not DJI controller. Uh, but because those wires were soldered, not even active, but just soldered, means that I was not getting activity from my Express LRS Nano installed in there. And that was a whole issue I had to go, you know, take it up with people in Discord to figure out why that was the case. Um, so if you are having issues uh, with even Betaflight recognizing your Express LRS uh, receiver at all, it could very well be your DJI air unit, in my case my O3 air unit, with the signal and ground um, taking over that S bus without you even knowing it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Beta FPV for sending me Express LRS to try out. Um, they sent me some of these receivers, but I'm going to buy a few more myself so I can finish up my fleet and make sure everything is Express LRS from here on. And I'll be sending, <laughs> I'll be selling my Crossfire stuff at some point. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy flying.